Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm the OP Jellison. Now you may or may not have heard of me from several of the leagues Matt has participated in, such as the ICBA and the WPL, but Matt asked me to cover this week four match in the Banlist Battlers League for him. So you already know I had to come through while he is on vacation, so I will be covering this game for you all now. I actually have not watched the game yet, so we'll be watching through it for the first time together, which I thought could be a lot more interesting than me just covering the game when I already know the result right here. So, Matt did leave me a couple notes right here regarding team preview, what sets he brought, and what sets he thought his opponent, the Philadelphia Soldu, coached by Ultra Player, brought too. So, Matt is bringing an SD Recover EQ E Speed Arceus right here. I believe it's Arceus Bug. Definitely does have good cleaning potential right here, just has to be weary of obviously the Arcanine and several other uh, threats to it, such as the uh, Garchomp, of course. Then he has the Rocky Helmet Landorus T right here, which can definitely be good pivots on stuff like Mega Kangaskhan, which can obviously, I believe, carry Seismic Toss, so it'll definitely be taking a lot of damage from the Rocky Helmet right there. Also, just a good pivot for stuff like Garchomp and Arcanine. Just gotta be careful about the Will-O-Wisp. Then he has a mixed Mega Altaria. I'm not sure if that means it's a Dragon Nance with mixed attacks, or whether it's just four attacks, but I guess we will be finding out. Then he has Shuka Mixed Blaziken. I'm assuming the Shuka Berry is just for the Garchomp, of course, but that does also seem to have good late game cleaning potential. If you can get up Aurora Veil with his Alolan Ninetales right here, which is running a, an Aurora Veil Toxic set is all he left me right here, so I guess we might find out more about that set. And uh, then he has Scarf Rotom Wash right here, so that's going to be Matt's team. And uh, he said that he put EQ on a lot of his Pokemon. He does have quite a few EQ users right here with the Landorus, Altaria, I believe Blaziken gets it too, probably, and the Arceus. He said he expected Tentacruel to come, but unfortunately that did not even show up to the match, so unfortunately a lot of those EQ slots are going to be wasted because Arcanine can take those pretty well anyway, but hopefully Matt can come through anyway. And then at Team Preview, he also assumed that his opponent would be Scarf Genesic, Spdef Mesprit, Fizdef Coat, Togekiss, Wish Kangaskhan, Scarf Garchomp, and Defensive Arcanine. Now, those are definitely very solid predictions, of course. Defensive Arcanine is pretty much a must-bring right here. And I'm assuming Matt's, one of Matt's initial goals is to get rid of that thing, just so he can clean with his Blaziken right here. But looking at lead matchup, I definitely think rocks are good for both players, just because uh, the rocks for Ultra Player would pressure the Arceus Bug as well as the Alolan Ninetales, and obviously Matt needs to weaken that Arcanine, so rocks could definitely be good on his part too. So to do that, he may try to lead off with the Lander's T, of course. I don't believe he has another Stealth Rocker. Maybe Blaziken gets them? I'm not quite sure, but Lander's T definitely looks like the primary Stealth Rock setter right here, since it is that Rocky Helmet set. And then, obviously, since it is Scarf Rodom, it's, I'm assuming it's not going to be Defog, so he really can't lead off with that thing if he wants to try to get rid of Rocks early, because Rocks does have more power points than Defog, and... The uh, Ultra player right here actually has several Star Rockers between the Garchomp and the Mesprit, so that's kind of my whole thoughts on the lead matchup right here. Probably Lando T versus the Garchomp and the Mesprit is my prediction, but let's go ahead and hop right in. Okay, so hopping into the game right here, Matt's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Zerodom Wash. Neither player led off with their Stealth Rocker, very interesting, but I guess maybe they have more offensive sets, but this Genesec does actually reveal to be Choice Scarf right here, because Matt is obviously Choice Scarf Rotom. As Matt's gonna throw off a Hydro Pump right here, and the damage is definitely bad on Rotom, but the damage on Mesprit could really help him out in terms of sweeping with stuff like Blaziken right now, because he doesn't need this in range of those fire type attacks, but he's gonna go ahead and defog the rocks away, which is very smart, just because obviously he doesn't want to have his uh, bug type and his ice type get worn down, the Arceus bug and the yellow and nine tails. He's gonna go for the U-turn right here, and that crit's really great. I don't think it would have mattered though, because it's probably in range of Blaziken anyway. And he makes a really offensive plant at Blaziken right here. I guess he was expecting either the Ice Beam or the Rocks to go back up, just not the Psychic Attack, but he's able to knock out the Mass Spirit right there, which puts him in a really great position right here. If he can get rid of this Arcanine, and maybe even get a Roraville up, he can definitely do some work with the Blaziken late game, but out comes the Rotom Wash, of course, just the initial uh, Togekiss counter right here, as Matt's gonna go, I mean, the opponent's gonna go ahead and switch out into the Mega Kangaskhan. This is gonna knock him out, isn't it? This return is just gonna blow him back, I'm pretty sure. If not with Parental Bond, yeah, it just knocks him out. That thing is too strong. As the Rotom Wash is gonna go down, which could put him in a bad spot when it comes to switching into Air Slashes from Togekiss, but I guess we'll see what goes down right here. Goes out into his Landorus T, which just ends up dying too, so the only thing Matt has going for him right here is the fact that he just got a ton of Rocky Helmet damage off which could put this thing in a range of extreme speed from the Arceus, which it does appear he's going to try to pick him off with, so he's going to go ahead and switch out here into the Togekiss, 
as the E-Speed is going to pop off. This could be an opportunity to set a Veil. He could also just go Mega Altaria here and try to take these hits as the Alolan Ninetales is going to come out, so Veil here could be very big because it could uh, potentially give the... Okay, that crit sucked, but yeah, that crit's terrible. That Veil was definitely very necessary to win. I actually think that just lost Matt the, Matt the match right here because he has no way to reliably set up now. He's going to bring out the Mega Altaria. Doesn't this just die to like any sort of fairy type attack? Uh, I don't think it gets Moonblast, but Dazzling Gleam still kills. Wow, that's really terrible for Matt right there. But he can bring out, I guess his, his next best thing right here would be the Arceus bug. And just try to go off an Air Slash miss, I guess, is what he's going to try to do. Uh, he's going to go right here for the Recover, and maybe if an Air Slash misses, he can take a turn to set up a Swords Dance, but I'm not sure if the Arcanine has it or not. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, I'm not sure whether this Togekiss has a Defog or not, but if the Veil did go up, and then he went for the defog, then he could have gotten rid of the veil, but then he would have he could have just gotten up the veil again. I guess Hale would have gone down eventually, but obviously there's other factors that could come into play, like Matt having hypnosis potentially, but yeah, this Togekiss is hitting all, all of its air slashes right here, which is just terrible for Matt, and it looks like this is going to be a very quick paced game right here, unless one of these air slashes misses, which would be very big, but it looks like this is going to be the last opportunity, it looks like. He's going to go back up to 56, and it looks like all the rolls have been above 56 right here, so there's a slash is going to connect and knock him out, and this Blaziken, I don't think it has a way of okoing this Togekiss right now, so it looks like it's just going to come out and faint right here too, and really that, that crit onto Alolan Ninetales is terrible. Obviously there were definitely some plays Ultra Player could have made to get around the Aurora Veil being up, for example several Defoggers potentially roar on the Arcanine, which could definitely have been big, he could willow us the Arceus bug and then roar it out. But obviously plus two Earthquake would have hurt the Arcanine a lot, and it would have been a ton of theory money after that, but really the Aurora Veil uh, not going up was basically what gave Matt no chance at this match right here, and that's going to be a really brutal 5-0 loss, but still hope you all enjoyed the match of course, despite the fact that Matt got crit of course, and that was definitely very unfortunate. I'm sure he'll bounce back though, he's a very good battler, definitely a much better battler than me, and... Yeah, he's definitely going to be doing very well in the coming few weeks right here, so hope you all are looking forward to that, of course, and uh, congratulations to Ultra Player for the win. That's going to be week 4 of the BBL. I believe Matt is a 1 in 3 now. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's 1 in 3. And yeah, Matt, we'll see you all next time.